Good morning, guys. Rise and grind. Happy Sunday. Just literally rolled out of bed. It's like 8 a.m. here in the Northeast here. The sun is shining in, and I'm getting ready to watch some tennis, watching the Wimbledon final today. My favorite player, Novak, is going to play. But I thought I'd get up, have a good morning with you guys, and talk a little bit of wide receivers before I start my day. In this video, I'm going to give you guys five wide receivers that are must-haves. I love these wide receivers. I got a lot of stock in, in several of these wide receivers I'm going to mention here today. And I think that they're in a great position this year to absolutely dominate. Now, when you are looking at wide receiver, there is a ton of risk, guys, this year at the wide receiver position, especially in the early rounds. Guys like Justin Jefferson, major, major risk, guys. You got to be careful when drafting Jefferson with that rookie quarterback, especially with Sam Darnold starting potentially, right? J.J. McCarthy may get the start, but you're starting – you're, you're drafting a quarterback round one, top five pick, and literally, dudes, you got you know Sam Darnold as your starter. So with the wide receiver position, it's very, very touch and go, a little uncertainty. And what's crazy, I want to give you guys a disclaimer about wide receiver this year. This is very, very important, is that a lot of people are going to mess up their teams with wide receiver because guys like DJ Moore, guys like Diggs, you know, guys like Nico Collins are in diluted situations target dilution situations where we don't even know who the wide receiver one is so i'm actually avoiding all of those wide receivers you know you know guys like dj moore guys like Diggs, guys like even tank dell if you want the wide receiver one in houston it could be tank dell you get him around five instead of a second or third round pick on let's say nico collins or stefan Diggs. keenan allen another one right like who's the wide receiver one i think it could be romo Tuesday. you get him a lot later than you get keenan allen so you know one of these guys is going to go off potentially right but i don't want to play wide receiver roulette so in this video like i said i got five wide receivers that you know, that I like that are certain that they're the wide receiver one to some degree. I mean, there's always question marks. Other guys can emerge, right? But there's a lot more certainty and a lot more value. You don't have to spend a second round pick on some of these guys where you're like, oh, okay, well, is he the wide receiver one? You don't have to go through that. So I'm excited to dive into this, talk some wide receivers. If you are new to the channel, smash it, tap it, slap it, hit that thumbs up. I'm excited to dive into this video. Again, I'm just waking up, rolled out of bed here. Uh, harsh elements. I got the sun directly in my eyes here. Not too much wind today. Beautiful day. Hope you guys are having an amazing Sunday. Um, again, a lot of politics happened yesterday. I don't know if you guys saw it. Um, listen, America needs to come together, whether you're left or right. I don't want to talk too much politics, but we saw what happened to Trump. Uh, very unfortunate. Some people saying it's staged. Whatever your view and opinion is, it was crazy, and it shouldn't have happened. Um, obviously, it didn't seem like it was because the person that did the act was taken down. So uh, it seemed like it was definitely real. Some divine intervention saved him. So very blessed that he's okay. Uh, no matter what your belief is, you shouldn't wish any harm on anybody. So glad uh, Trump is okay. And man, it was just a crazy, crazy evening last night. Uh, my DM was blowing up. Uh, news all over the place saying, oh man, this happened. It, it was just wild, man. So glad he's okay. And, uh, you know, states need to come together. And it's just been absolutely crazy uh, from the debates to what happened yesterday. And I think, you know, there's continued drama with this political stuff. It's unbelievable. So I don't want to talk too much about that. Fantasy is an escape from that. Uh, though that's kind of why I want to talk about this. Is like fantasy for me has been escape with a lot of things, right? Whether it be personal stuff, political stuff, it's an escape. So if you guys are new to the channel, smash it, tap it, slap it, where we could share each other's passion together. And you're actually getting winning advice here on the channel. Hit the thumbs up. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think uh, uh, in regards to kind of yesterday, but also uh, which wide receiver you like more importantly, because, you know, we're fantasy focused here, of course, but I want to keep it real with you guys as well. Uh, also grab the 16 round drafts, which I've linked it below. Use code smash to save uh, sleepers, breakouts, optimal players draft each round. Everything you guys need, I've linked it below. Make sure you guys secure the solution, secure the championship, and grab a ticket to the summit. Uh, got some amazing players coming on the show as well. Uh, Kyra Williams, Trey Benson, um, Rashid Shahid. It's going to be amazing, and they're all going to be at the summit as well. They're also going to be on the show and we do a podcast with them as well. Okay, So let's talk about these five wide receivers, starting off with the first one. Like I said, there's a lot of risk at wide receivers, so you want to mitigate that risk by drafting these five right here, okay? The first one's Garrett Wilson. The guy had a mediocre, uh, just above average year last year, and he did had bad quarterback play. Aaron Rodgers has come out and said, dude, listen, I'm not going to play football unless I know that I can play and I could win a Super Bowl. You know, a lot of people want, you know, the Jets to win a Super Bowl. I think there was a video 
uh, there was a, a person that was crying at a golf course. I don't know the, the, the context of it, but he was running up to Aaron Rodgers saying, you know, you got to win a Super Bowl for me. And he was actually crying, you know, so uh, pretty crazy, man. A lot of Jets fans want a Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers says he can play at, at a high level still. Garrett Wilson, the primary wide receiver. Now, there was a little bit of concern with Aaron Rodgers saying that he wants Adams back. Whether Adams is coming back this year, I highly doubt it. I mean, he's the primary weapon on the Raiders' offense. I doubt there's going to be a trade there. But, hey, man, crazier things have happened. But if Adams comes in, that's definitely going to, you know, destroy Garrett Wilson's value. But the way that it sits right now, man, I mean, Garrett Wilson is absolutely primed to succeed. So if you are looking for a later round wide receiver, I think Garrett Wilson is one of the safer ones. At least you know who's throwing the ball. Mind you, injury was a concern with Rodgers, it happened last year. That's left in, in the background. So he should be good. He should be good to go uh, this year. Aaron Rodgers, Garrett Wilson, prime for a ton of volume. And he's a safe wide receiver. One where we know he's the wide receiver. One. We don't got to question. We don't got to say, you know, you know, is it this guy or this guy or that guy? You know what you're getting with Garrett Wilson and you're getting the wide receiver one. So I think he's a must-have if you're looking at wide receiver at that position. I tend to always go running back. I'd rather get a Saquon, for example, than a Garrett Wilson. I'm, I'm going running back early no matter what. But again, it's up to you guys. Make sure you guys get one. Get a wide receiver that's high on the depth chart, that's clear cut. That, that's the main important, important message of today. If you get nothing out of this, this video, make sure you get that message that you don't want to play wide receiver roulette with like a DJ Moore round three, you know, a Nico Collins round two, when easily Diggs could be the one in Houston. We don't know. So that's the big takeaway today, okay? Number two, must-have wide receiver is Marvin Harrison Jr. Listen, I love the talent. I love the upside. Now, there's other guys that, like, that I could mention later in this video that could supersede Harrison, right? Harrison is great talent. Kyler Murray is the big issue. I keep going back to, can Kyler do it? I say, yes, he can. Last time he did it was 2020 with um, with DeAndre Hopkins. Now you can say, well, DeAndre Hopkins was a veteran receiver, more experienced. But no, listen, Harrison is one of, if not the most polished players out of this draft at the wide receiver position. Polished route runner, phenomenal hands, solid speed, great red zone target, great, great route runner, great everything. Guys, I cannot express to you how ready he is, but how that's going to translate into the NFL, what he did in college, which is amazing, how that's going to translate to the NFL, still yet to be seen with Kyler Murray. But again, you're in that situation where the gap between him and the wide receiver too, whoever it is, Wilson, or whoever the wide receivers are there in Arizona that nobody cares about, um, you know, is a big gap. Whereas, like I said, you got Nico coming off round two to three, then you got Diggs coming off the same area, and you got Dell coming off a round or two after that. So nobody knows. And you got to look at volume as well, right? So a couple other guys I'm going to mention here, their quarterback throws a ton of volume right? They're volume quarterbacks. Whereas, you know, I think it was CJ Stroud. Go back and look. I think it was like 12th or 14th or something like that in passing attempts. While, you know, he is a passing quarterback, he didn't throw as much as other quarterbacks like Josh Allen, for example, who threw fifth in passing attempts last year, right? So you got to take a look at like, you know, depth chart, talent, of course, how big is that gap and how much volume does that quarterback throw so if you're drafting three wide receivers within the first two or three rounds like how much volume are they really going to get so that's something you got to question yourself okay so Harrison another great guy great talent great position and a must-have wide receiver coming off second round very expensive and again you can get discounts with like even guys like Malik Neighbors who could do really well too with a kind of a questionable quarterback in Daniel Jones but you get him at a round or two discount so if you want Malik both great talent Harrison's up to you guys okay um Okay, let's go to my third wide receiver I love. We talked about Garrett Wilson. We talked about Marvin Harrison. The third wide receiver I love, coming off in the second round, we talked about the certainty of who the one is, and that's Drake London. Who, who else they got there? I mean, they got Pitts. They got Mooney. They got Bijan catching the ball in the backfield, who I absolutely love. But they brought in Kirk Cousins, and we know Kirk Cousins makes good fantasy wide receivers. We saw it with Jefferson. We saw it with Addison. So Drake London is in an amazing situation where he's the one. He's got an upgrade at quarterback. He was a first-round pick on his team. And he's got to – this is a make-or-break. Guys, I cannot emphasize how important this year for Drake London. This is the year – me and Jim were talking about this – whether he becomes a Jerry Judy of the NFL or whether he becomes a Justin Jefferson of the NFL. This is the year he wants to get paid big time like every other wide receiver here. So he's got to show, man, I'm good. It was a quarterback thing with me. I wasn't getting good quarterbacks, and now I'm ready to 
prove to you guys I'm a top elite wide receiver in the NFL. And Drake London's coming off in the second round. So if you want a secure wide receiver that's got a good quarterback throwing to him that's in a position where he's going to be the one, clear cut, you got to go Drake London. He's a must-have for me. Um, so when I'm in the second round, I'm looking for him. I like him better than Nico Collins because, again, you got a quarterback that's proven, a little more certain, has, has made Jefferson really good, and, of course, you got a situation where he's the clear-cut one, okay? He's a must-have. Now, the next two guys... Um, obviously come with a little bit of risk, but they are rookies. I love the upside. I love the talent. I already included a rookie as well, Marvin Harrison. I'm all about the rookies. I think you can get it done with the right rookies, okay? These two next wide receivers are going to absolutely crush it. Now, I, again, I included in my 16-round draft, so you should make sure you guys grab it. You get all the sleepers, all the breakouts, all the optimal players, and you're going to have a as close to an ironclad roster as possible. So make sure you guys grab 16 rounds. I've linked it below. Use code SMASH. Uh, I'm going to get to these two rookies, and I've got these guys in all my leagues. So these guys, these are my ride or, you know, fade out to the sunset type picks. Like, if these guys don't hit, my teams could be, I want to say hurting because I get a ton of depth. So I've always made sure that I get an ace wide receiver early. I get a ton of depth with wide receiver breakouts later, my sleepers. And I'm very top heavy with my running backs, and I always anchor my team with an ace quarterback and the solid tight end. So I always have you know, a backup plan for a backup plan. Even if these guys don't do well, I'm good. But they're just such home run hitters. So let's get to them. I feel really confident with them. The first one's Lad McConkey. Now, is he the clear-cut one? There's always speculation. Could uh, Quentin Johnson come back, emerge, and be the one? Very possible, but very unlikely. Last year had the opportunity to shine, even with Mike Williams out. As I said that Mike Williams would be out, and Keenan Allen out missing the last three games. And still, still the guy didn't really do anything. So... I was really watching him last year because I had him stashed on my bench. It's like, why aren't you guys using your first round pick? And it's like, I don't know what he did, man. They just don't like the guy. I can't explain it, man. So uh, Quentin Johnson, just not utilized as much as he could have. Now, that being said, in comes McConkie, who didn't have amazing stats in college, but was, is a solid rut runner. Guys, I've been watching. Solid rut runner, great separation, good vision, solid speed. And he's got Justin Herbert, who already came out and said, listen, this guy is performing on a veteran level. Like, Herbert's already giving praises to McConkey. You've got freed up targets there with Heaton Allen being gone. you got uh, Mike Williams being gone. you got Justin, uh, Justin, Austin Eckler being gone. So Justin Herbert loves those check downs. Dude, this guy's going to be a PPR monster, and you get him in round seven. He's like wide receiver 45. Dude, wide receiver 45, this guy could finish top 10 and will finish top 10, and everybody's going to be riding him next year. And now he's sitting at wide receiver 5, similar to what they did with Laporta last year. Everyone said Laporta's you know, tight end 21. I'm like, dude, no, just get Laporta as your starter. And sure enough, look what happened, right? Everybody's now riding Laporta, round 2. It's crazy, guys. So you got to see the talent before it breaks out. And Lad McConkey's absolutely primed, guys. This guy is going to eat, okay? Last guy here, massive ceiling. And I always get the question, do you like Lad McConkey or this next guy, Keon Coleman? I just got both on my team. It's up to you guys to make a decision. Do you want both? Do you like to... Um, I'm okay with doing stuff like that. You say, well, it's risky to draft two rookie wide receivers. No, not really. Because you're getting this guy round eight and nine. You're getting McConkey round seven. I like these guys more than like Nico Collins, okay? I like these guys more than like DJ Moore, and I don't have to spend a second or third round pick. So you can say, yeah, you risky Joe rookies. No, dude, I feel totally confident with these guys. So last guy here is Keon Coleman. Again, similar situation where there's a ton of volume freed up. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams gone with the Chargers. Now you've got, you know, Stefan Diggs, Gabe Davis freed up. They're gone, voided. In comes Keon Coleman, who was drafted with a 33rd overall pick first pick in the second round guys this guy you know personality is awesome i just watched a video with him talking about rut, run, rut running iq talking about how passionate he is about rut running uh the guy's got a very good iq about about football uh you know he's a big guy what is he 6'3 215 big strong 6'4 whatever he is big body now his his dash time wasn't extremely fast for for uh 40 yard dash but his gauntlet time was great when he was catching the ball it looked amazing his rep running looked pretty solid they were knocking him in college saying his his uh separation wasn't good dude it was college man he wasn't utilized to his max potential he didn't have josh allen throwing the ball 
And this guy, again, he all he has to do is maybe get a game or two under his belt, kind of adjust to that NFL speed, and we've got ourselves an absolute superstar that everybody's going to be riding. The way I look at it is this. Stefan Diggs was coming off round one the past three to four years. Now you're getting his replacement, who I think is more of a freakish, better athlete with a better attitude, could have that amazing rapport with Allen, and you're getting him at a eight round discount from where you were getting digs guys i'm all over it and people are saying well they got khalil shakir here and curtis that's all the excuses we hear all the time is like this guy that guy they always the can sheeps just like to use excuses on why they discount certain players and why coleman isn't a first round pick Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel doesn't even have one 1,000-yard rushing season. The guy sucks. He's an absolute trash player. He's a gadget player. He's like a Corderell Patterson, even, but even worse. Patterson's a better athlete. So you guys got to look at opportunity, volume, talent, situation, who's throwing the ball when you guys are making your executive wide receiver decisions. And I'm riding a lot of rookies this year in my, in my drafts. Okay, guys? So... Think smart, look at value, look at opportunity, look at depth chart. But these are five fantasy football wide receivers I must have for 2024. Make sure you roster some of them at least. Get them on your roster because there's massive upside and great opportunity. If you're new to the channel, smash or tap and slap it. Go grab 16 rounds. And I got to go watch the tennis match here. Have an outstanding Sunday, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll talk soon. I'm out.